Hello, it's Dr. Grayson. I hope you're doing well today, everyone. This particular video is going to be discussing digital advertising. And not to get confused with social marketing, we are going to specifically look at digital advertising related to banner ads and advertisements that you can have on websites and on the internet outside of social properties. So here's what we're going to accomplish today. I want you to understand the importance of digital advertisement as it relates to the consumer buyer's journey remembering where people are in their decision-making process. We're going to look at lots of different types of digital ad formats, and then we're going to look at the pros and the cons of various creation platforms. So you're going to look at actually creating some digital ads for your marketing plans that you have for your semester project. And then finally, you know, how are you going to translate um, your brand identity into your digital properties. So that's what we're going to accomplish in this module. First of all, I want to spend a few minutes just discussing the assignment that goes along in this module for our digital promotions. First of all, what we're trying to achieve is that give you a hands-on opportunity to play with some ads, develop them on their own. Obviously, not all of you are going to be designers or communications people, but I want you to learn that there are tools out there and there's skills that you're learning in this course that you can do it on your own or that you can give really good guidance to those who might be creating them for you. So here's what we're going to accomplish. You're going to develop a buyer's journey for your target audience for your semester project. You're going to create a real world brand story. You're going to evaluate social and digital channels for your product and then finally create some promotion assets. So there's a couple of parts to this. So the first one I mentioned was creating a consumer buyer's journey. And that particular template that I have for you is uploaded into Canvas. So I want you to take one of your target audiences and really work through that buyer's journey and complete it in, in its entirety. Now that you have your buyer's journey, the second thing you're going to do is you're going to start to play with creating some digital assets. First of all, I want you to create a brand story for your client. So tell me in one or two paragraphs, describe your story. Be sure you provide the purpose of the story, the objective, what you're trying to accomplish, and then the decision stage that it's in. Finally, I want you to create a digital interpretation of what that story might look like. So here we've got a Facebook story, and this was um, a student that I had that was opening up a window cleaning service. So he depicted his story within a phone here. So you can create a story, whether it's you know a mock Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, or even a video if you wanted to do something on YouTube or TikTok. And then finally, you are going to create banner or digital ads that we're going to learn about here. And you're going to describe to me what um, the message, the key messages for this promotion, the call to action you're going to use in each of these digital assets. So you're going to provide me with a minimum of two different banner ads that can be used for your client. So go to um, Canvas, review this assignment, and as you work through this module, this will be um, your assignment that will be due. So we've talked before about the consumer buyer's journey. I want you to pull out that map, download it from, from Canvas if you don't have it handy, and I want you to think about how do we as marketers influence each of these buyer stages, awareness of need, information search, evaluating options, making decisions, evaluating a purchase. Then I want you to think about, as you're thinking about digital properties and traditional um, marketing tactics, what would you use for each one of these stages? Then think about key messages. What are those things in each of these stages are you most interested in communicating to move the person to the next stage? And where are you going to place your ad? 
If you're doing awareness of need, maybe you, you thought you're going to use some social property. Where are you going to place it? Are you going to place it in, in Instagram, Facebook, maybe do a, two, a TikTok video, et cetera? And then how are you going to measure it? So think about these things as you um, begin to look at the consumer's decision making. You can find this template in Canvas and go back to the if you need a reference, go back to the, the integrated marketing communications planning section where I have the how to's of to completing this particular template. So now we're going to do a little practice. So I asked you to take out your consumer buyer's journey map. So let's look at a few ads and I want you to think about where this might be in a, in a journey map. So here you've got a Doritos Locos Taco. Um, advertisement that's on this, this cell phone. Here we've got, you know, it, it's a Pandora ad. So here you've got skip to Pandora or click on this. So if you look at this, this is a beautiful taco. Um, find one now is their call to action, which will take you to a locator spot. And there's a hashtag. So think about that buyer's journey. Are they in ready to make a go out and buy the taco now? Are you trying to raise awareness for them that um, they are hungry and they need something to eat? Are you value is it dinner time and you're evaluating this taco versus other options you could have? So as you can see, those are different stages of the consumer's buyer's journey. And I want you to think about for an ad like this, where might you place that? Here we have another Pandora ad um, with an offer code. And this is, is a free overnight delivery and 20% off your first order. So when you're thinking about this, um, this likely is going to be towards the end of the buyer's journey, right? Because you're getting somebody, you're wanting them to act now with an offer code with a 20% off discount. So maybe they are already aware that you're a grocery delivery service, maybe not, but using this type of offer message really helps people cement a decision on whether they're going to buy or not. Here we've got a few things. So this is a Bonobos ad with some beautiful polo shirts of different colors. So today only classic peak polos are $35 with this code. So if you think about this, Maybe there's some creating awareness here that they have polos and that they come in a variety of colors, but they're also looking at maybe we're 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 going to um, if you at, if you act now today only, which is very much of decision making. We're at the end of the buyer's journey and the decision making process. And finally, here is uh, from American Express. It's welcome, welcome in, John. So this is looking like you're entering Seattle. So this is some great awareness advertising for the brand of American Express, but also giving you some great information about where you are. So this is how I want you to look at how you might design your key messages, your ads related to where the consumer might be in their buyer's journey. So here we've got my Bluetooth speakers don't sound great. So they've got a couple of things here. My speakers sound great. A little play on words. Um, so again, this might be an awareness or maybe an evaluating of options. So maybe they're comparing this Bluetooth speaker to this one. Here we get Amazon Music sign up and get an Echo Dot for a dollar. So again, we've got an offer here. So you're probably already aware of the Amazon Music and the Echo, but you can get it for a dollar. So we're getting you to try right now. So here we've got um, Ring Doorbell, which has some great explanation about what it does. So I would, con I would consider this maybe the front end of the buyer's journey. You've got some pictures of the product. They're showing what it's going to look like on your cell phone. They're telling you about some features. So they're creating awareness and they're also giving you an opportunity to evaluate some options. Get loved by Google. Get more traffic. This is very much um, a high level branding type awareness message. So here we go. This one here was um, I had stayed at the hotel at Eureka which is a little 
casino in Mesquite, Nevada. And I stayed there. And after I stayed there, they sent me a Facebook post that like, send a photo about, um, about your stay here, which is really a great interactive type of community building initiative. And so in this case, I am already through the buyer's process, but they're trying to create advocacy and customer loyalty and retention with me. Here we've got 32, 33 rare Titanic sinking photo taken just before and after it happened. This is what we call clickbait. So the clickbait is getting us to act now. Unfortunately, it'll take you to something probably a little sketchy. Here is a 10 off 30, $10 off your next $30 or more. Again, at the end of the buyer's journey and making a decision. And here is some um, earning flights with rewards. So there's a lot of information on here about what the offering is. So gaining awareness and evaluating options in your information search. So this is how I want you to go about devising your stories, your, your digital ads, to make sure that aligns to the objectives that you have. So in that case, once you've already defined your target audience, you're looking at what your key message is in, now where are you going to place those ads? So for digital ads, so think about the types of advertising you're going to encounter when you're on the internet outside of your social media channels. There's different types of digital ads, banner ads, text, floating banners, wallpaper, video ads, etc. I'm going to go through these. So as you think of your screen, whether it is on your phone, on your mobile device, or whether it is on a laptop or a computer, there are specific size ads that are already um, play are already out there for you to place your banner and each one of these ads is what we call real estate so you could be on a website and the pop under is going to be under a full banner and it's going to have your ad there or maybe you're going to have a vertical right rectangle over to the right side so generally when you're creating ads um, and you're using programmatic marketing which is the uh, type of advertising that you bid on, you're going to create different versions or size of the ads that will place these, these specs that are already out there so that you can just pop your ad in when needed. So these are just the common banner ad specs and you know you'll also have different ones for your mobile device. So let me go through some of the types of, of of ads available. So a floating ad, say for example, you're on your website, this looks like it could be, this is Fox News. So say you're on Fox News and you're scrolling down or you're looking at what the headlines are. The floating ad is the ad that doesn't go away at the bottom of the scroll until you click on it. So this is going to be something that you manually have to click on for it to go away. And it's always going to be there at the bottom of your screen. So that is called a floating ad. This is a native ad. Now native advertising is advertising that appears to be editorial. So it looks like it is a news or some type of source of information. So when you click on this, this will also be clickbait, you're going to go to a different page that might be more advertising heavy, um, heavy, it could be an editorial, but the native advertisement looks like it's news, but it's not. It's not like this one over here where you're seeing a picture of the product. This is trying to get you to take a quiz. We have something called a page takeover. So a page takeover would be taking every piece of available digital property that you have on that particular screen. So in this case, the laptop, we're going to have two side banners, a bottom banner, an upper banner here on your, your tablet is just the bottom banner on your met, on your your mobile device, it is just one. But this means that regardless of who is out there, you're going to purchase every piece of available real estate for your ads. All right, this is what we call wallpaper. Now wallpaper is similar to the takeover in that it just has one big ad that surrounds the other information. And then, of course, you've got video ads, which are really, um, as, as we learned from 
from other uh, videos, videos really, the imagery helps a lot in terms of conversion. So here you can have video um, on any of your sites, but it does really help provide, it's not your static banner as it's going to have um, some visual interactivity or some visual moving content. All right, in a video, obviously, you know, whether it's YouTube or TikTok or any of the other video channels will provide you an opportunity to do a short video um, advertisement that you can place based on your target audience. So let's now move into how are you going to create these ads? Obviously, you can hire somebody. And it may be worth your time to hire somebody who has an experience in, in um, not only design, but really marketing strategy. You might have marketing strategists and designers working together um, because, you know, there's so many different types of advertisements and looking at that buyer's journey, getting the creative, the key messages, the copywriting um, and, and the visual elements of it to align to your brand is just critical. So whether you decide to outsource it to a professional that you trust and have good work and references, or you decided to do yourself, there are several um, ad creators that you can use on your own. I have a few here. These are in Canvas. Obviously, if you are using Facebook or Instagram, um, or another platform that is social marketing, they likely will have a platform within their application to help you create your advertisements. There's Adobe Spark, which is a free Adobe version to help you with your social marketing. Canva.com, which is um, a free, there's a free and a premium version of, of really simple, easy to use design software. There's lots of templates in there. Banner Snack, we will go through that. And then also WordStream Creator. So go into Canvas and look at these. So, so as I mentioned before, if you were to go, if you were doing a Facebook campaign, you can go right into Facebook Creative Hub and they will walk you through how to create your digital asset. They're also going to walk you through the elements of what your strategy is. Are you looking to have somebody buy now? Do you want somebody to find your location or to learn more? So, so Facebook really does a nice job with not only helping you target your audience, what your objectives are, but they will help you provide you a tool to upload your assets in right in their platform. A lot of people prefer to create their digital assets before they, they uh, put them within a, a marketing platform. This is Canva. Canva is a nice um, platform. Sorry, I've got some stuff in here that allows you, I have the premium version, but you can also use the free version. But right here will help you really design anything. And it's super easy to use. If you want to do an Instagram story, um, you can pop right in there. It will give you some templates you can work with right here. You can change the fonts. You can add your own different images. But this is a super easy, convenient way for you to um, create your social media posts. Again, if you want to test and learn, maybe some ideas before you have a professional um, designer help you, that's great. But remember, there's, all, there's a video you can do. Um, for any of your marketing assets, if you want to create, go ahead and play with Canvas. See if you like it. Um, you know, quick and simple Facebook posts. There's night, lots of different um, templates that you can um, that you can create your own key messaging with. Really, really easy to use. So that is Canva, Canva.com. And again, you could um, use the free version, or if you are like me, excuse me, did I just uh, pop out of my, oh, there I am. Or you could, um, you could use the, the, the premium version. Now, Banner Snack is similar to Canva, but it's really just giving you different size banner ads that you can create. So if you wanted to look at Banner 
banner snack again it gives you multiple different sizes remember here i talked about the different typical specs you can use their templates you can upload your own information but just a nice way for you to create some ads now this is smart ads creator this is wordstream and it's a, it's interesting because i want to show you what you can do with this particular tool so you can put in any url any website and it will help you create uh, an ad from your website so if you are working with a particular um, client uh, for your for your semester product I suggest that you try putting in their website URL in here and make an ad for them just to see how it works it's not the most professional thing but it's interesting so let's see let's try let's Dunkin oh, is it Dunkin Donuts Let's see, Dunkin' Donuts. I'm going to just go over here and try to find Dunkin', Dunkin' Donuts. Obviously. Dunkin' Donuts, what is their URL? Oh, it's dunkindonuts.com. Okay, so I'm going to put dunkindonuts.com in here. And they're going to ask you, do you want leads or conversions? Do you want brand awareness or do you want e-commerce sales? So let's go to let's say we want um, brand awareness so you're gonna just sit here and wait it takes a couple minutes so what they're doing is they're going to the website so let's go to Dunkin Donuts their website here what this particular um, this particular thing is doing is it's scraping the website that you put in there and it's creating some ads for you so it will tell you where you are in the the process so here it's telling you okay I don't know why this isn't working it must not it must not like dunkindonuts.com sorry about that maybe I can't spell right So what it will do, it will scrape their website and it will populate pictures from the site into banner ads. And like I said, it's not really the most um, professional looking ads, but it's kind of fun just to play with. If you just, in, in for your assignment, your digital social assignment, I'm not looking for the best of the best. I'm looking for your strategy, your thought process on how this is, um, how you would go about telling your stories, getting people to buy your products, creating brand, aware, brand awareness. So again, this smart ads creator is simply scraping that web page and building some ads for you so it says here that this process may take up to two minutes i'm going to give you just another couple of seconds here it looks like it's almost done um, and we'll see what it's going to populate for us maybe this time it'll give me the right uh the right one so what I really want you to do, this is the same, um, the, 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 the ads creator. So this one was taken from a local restaurant that we have here in St. George, Utah called Wingnuts. And I did another one called um, Painted Pony. These are restaurants and it just populated ads uh, based, on, based on that. Um, there you go look at this based on that website so here what it did was it, it took just um, images off of that website obviously this they, I would probably make a better image than this but you know it is what it is uh, so if you you can see what they might look like they're look using the cup of coffee as their main key image here but try this um, kind of a fun little tool for you to try Again, no, we're not doing uh, that particular one. Sorry about that. So here's what I, I want you to do. I want you to play with these tools. I want you to practice with them. And for your social and digital assignment, use these tools to, to create just some rudimentary ads. I want to know what your strategy is. I want to be able to understand your story. What are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to sell something? Are you trying to create brand awareness? So go back and review um, that 
that assignment in Canvas and practice with these free tools that we have. Obviously, if you're trying to create a professional portfolio, and may, many of you are, you will want to use more of a professional design. Um, if, you're, you, if you're planning on creating a portfolio piece for your marketing interviews, um, please you know, try, try to do the more, more professional job if you can, and I certainly can help you with that if you would like to understand some more tools. So that said, as always, questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me. The best way is to email me through Canvas. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will find this and other videos related to all kinds of things that the marketing doctor can provide to you. So have a wonderful day. Enjoy creating your digital ads, your promotions. I'm so excited to see what fun work you come up with. And take care.